ज्ञानदीप अकेडमी इंडिया टॉप कोचिंग इंस्टीट्यूशन फॉर सिविल सर्विसेज प्रिपरेशन Join us online to get most enriching experience from best faculty with excellent notes and specially designed courses. To join the batch, download Nandi Pais Academy app from Google Play Store. For more information, contact nine five double one two eight zero four six five. Hello, everybody. Welcome you all again. Let's continue with Karl Marx. Earlier in the last, uh, let's say, couple of sessions, we discussed about two important topics related to Karl Marx. Those topics were historical materialism, and the second was mode of production, right? And uh, I'm sure that you must be thorough with these two concepts in its understanding, right? Now, in this session, we are going to start with one of the important concept. important uh, idea given by karl marx and again one of the most revolutionary ideas uh, in its complete sense the topic of alienation but before that for couple of minutes let's create a background of what we have already learned right marx starts his idea on capitalism with the concept of historical materialism right according to marx the foundation of society or society is founded on the material foundations economic foundations and in that economic or the material foundation or you can say as the production process is the central part of the society and production is a materialistic and economic concept the foundation of the society is economic and materialistic and in that foundation or the economic or materialistic foundation it resides uh, you can say there resides nothing but the two concepts called as fop and rop right and in order to survive man must produce while he is producing he goes undergoes or he involves himself into certain relations of production but the change in the factors of production is very natural thing over the period of time the technology tools skills will develop themselves and that's how it will lead to change in the fop and once the fop changes it leads to change in the relations of production as in communist communism the primitive communism the relations of production were egalitarian right equal relations they got converted into slave and master relations then ultimately towards let's say serf and uh, feuds relation and now currently in capitalism this this relation is identified by the relation of bourgeois and proletariat or uh, haves and have nots and why these relationships are changing by the way they are changing because of the change in the factors of production and as both the factors of production and relations of production change it leads to change in a mode of production and a mode is nothing but a shift or a stage in the progress of the society a stage where marx has enumerated six such stages three in the past one in present and two in the future three in the past one in present that we are presently living in and two will be the future modes of production they can be named as primitive communism ancient slave society feudalistic mode of production currently capitalism then after capitalism once the capitalism will crumble down it will get transformed into another mode of production that is called as socialistic mode of production and ultimately the society's aim and goal is to move towards or to stabilize itself into a communism or communistic mode of production that is the end of the you can say the progress of society and the society will stabilize there 
this is about historical materialism and mode of production and few uh, basic concepts like rop fop fop is techniques skills tools rop is nothing but relations and in that relations we discussed about there are two types of relations uh, one relationship is with the man and man and second is about man and thing the relationship of man and man is antagonistic right and as you know according to marx what is the driver of the history or what is the driver of the evolution of societies or the progress of societies it is the contradictions it is the contradictions which drives the history and society or history or society by the way the progress of society from one stage to another is driven by nothing but the contradictions antagonism conflicts according to marx the contradictions reach at their peak in capitalistic mode of production and these contradictions transform the labor class into revolutionaries they undergo revolution what marx termed as class conflict and that's how capitalism will change to the next mode of production that is socialism but the there is something missing in our uh, you can say uh, understanding we talked about the you can say overview of marx's ideas but something is missing in that link or the the link uh, starts with a question but why those workers or laborers will join their hands rose against exploitation or rise against exploitation but why right what is that force what is that situation what is that condition that leads to joining the hands of the laborer what is the motivation inspiration and driving force behind the class conflict or a revolution that is responsible for crumbling down of capitalism that link or that situation and condition we are going to discuss today in the form of alienation that condition is alienation according to marx the workers are exploited at that extent that they lose themselves they get divorced from their own being they get divorced from their self society production everything they lose their human existence and that drives a natural force to revolt against that situation that force that idea the alienation we are going to discuss today <coughs> according to marx by the way before we start technicalities of alienation let's discuss something about background of alienation <coughs> according to marx any human and individual has two identities by the way the two identities the first is his self being his own being b e i n g the idea of being right or the self being individual being is the first identity of the man and second or another identity of the man or the individual is nothing but his social being who the individual really is is the identity called as individual being human or a self being right and with with what prefix or suffix the individual is known and recognized in the society is its his social being it is the identity at social level 
and being is nothing but or the self being is nothing but who really he is let's say for example let's take an example of a guy who is working uh, let's say in a <clears throat> for example uh, i have a colleague who is a great photographer at the same time he teaches in this academy right we will limit the the example to this being concept only it has nothing to do with alienation by the way okay just think on it i have a colleague who is a photographer at the same time he works here out of passion of course uh, for teaching right but a very few people among us and student of his know that he is a photographer very few know that he is a photographer but most of us and many all of us in uh, identify him as nothing but a teacher a professor a, a mentor getting me if he is identified recognized or, or you can say called with the name of sir he it is his social being and who he is really he is uh, he is a great poet by the way he is a photographer he is a blogger a video blogger right and that's how the creativity the creative identity who he is truly is is his own individual identity own individual being according to marx man by nature is a creative being a and a creative individual why creative according to marx the production process itself is a creative thing the production process itself is a creative thing and according to marx if the production process is at the center of the complete society or the social structure you can think that production has been a centrality of human life production process has been a centrality of the human life and production in itself is a creative thing and that's how an individual is a creative thing by nature a creative individual by nature right he used to produce he used to create for his own survival for need right he used to produce with the help of nature right earlier when he used to live in the hunting gathering societies he used to live he used to produce with the help of nature according to marx the extent of the human control over nature has been the history of society man has always tried to overpower control regulate or something like this control the nature but in this exercise in the earlier societies or the primitive societies the nature used to overpower the nature used to overpower the individuals and to control the nature to control the natural forces the man created technologies skills and tools for example nature and production process or the nature is that we need something to eat and in hunting gathering societies the eater is where nothing but the animals and a man if at all he wants to control or kill those animals he will require certain tools and those tools what we call it as forces of production are nothing but a creation of man in the quest to control the nature next phase in the next phase let's say for example agriculture man developed certain technologies fertilizers pesticides tractors machines and all everything to regulate to control to overpower the nature right and that's how according to you can say marx 
man has been a very creative thing man has been very creative since his you can say evolution but many times throughout this evolution man has been overpowered by one thing or another sometimes he will be overpowered by nature sometimes he will be overpowered by masters sometimes he will be overpowered by the feudal lords sometimes he will be overpowered by the capitalists the 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 situation of overpowering the man by few others detaches himself from the production process he starts losing his interest in the production process when earlier in communism primitive communism when he used to produce out of creativity when he used to produce out of need subsistence now he will start producing out of compulsion right can you observe something here what is the nature of man what is the nature of man what is his being his being is of creativity but now what is his social being it is out of compulsion why is producing or why is working in that area or agriculture or under masters as a slave or in the factories out of compulsions you can relate to anybody around you even to yourselves if you want to work if you want involve yourself into a production process you won't survive there are only a couple of percentage of people who work out of passion right but there are many who will work for or out of compulsion compulsion of production compulsion of survival can you can you relate something to it the being concept which is the original identity of an individual was out of his own will now his social identity social being is a social construct a compulsion which is you can say imposed by the society according to marx the identity of man identity of a woman identity of a human being in the society today is a social construct a, a a product of social structure social compulsions we aspire to become ias ips or something like that because the society has created those positions we aspire to become industrialist entrepreneur or a, a businessman a business tycoon because the society produces such positions society through socialization teaches us yes of course ki these po these positions are lucrative powerful significant influencing and those positions are worth of aspiring and that's how when we reach to that position we think that it is out of our own passion but having a wider picture you will get to know that the actually the society wanted us to get to that position society starts from family itself according to marx the being and the social being are two different concepts in the primitive communism the man used to live with his being identity self identity he used to produce out of need creativity but when he started progressing from one mode of production to another starting with the ancient slave mode of production where the masters started exploiting the slaves in the next mode of production feudalism 
where the feuds or the feudal lords started exploiting the serbs and also in capitalism when the capitalists or bourgeois or the haves started exploiting the have nots or the labor class or the proletariat in this all three modes of production the majority of the people or the ruling you can say the ruled class by the way not ruling class the ruled class who is working let's say for example uh, the slaves the serfs and the capitalists sorry and the laborers or the proletariats all these three classes will work out of compulsion their labor will not be out of creativity self identity but it will be the identity given by the society they will work for the interest of the others not their own works and that's how slowly and slowly they will detach themselves from the production process psychologically and emotionally they will not have bonds emotional bond creative bond with that production process the production process will become mechanistic manual robotic they will come they will work they will go home they will again the next day will come work for the sake of work out of compulsion and they will again go to home and this will go on for entire life you can observe where uh, the very purpose of existence that is the production process is getting manipulated the workers who are the real producers they are starting to lose their interests interest in the production process this idea <clears throat> this concept this feeling of detachment from the work from the labor from the production process marx called it as alienation the dictionary meaning or the simple understanding of alienation is nothing but a divorce from a separation from according to marx the history of mankind is the history of alienation throughout the history except in or you can say in uh, uh, primitive communism the alienation the feeling of alienation was at its minimum it started with primitive or the ancient slave society it again further intensified in feudal societies and now in capitalist societies it has reached its peak what do i am trying to understand that or uh, convey to you that alienation is separation from the labor separation from the purpose of own existence a separation from the produce a separation and divorce from the production process when you start losing your interest in the production process you start feeling alienated and the process of alienation is not new to human kind it has been the story in the history throughout the history as marx marx called it as man has been feeling alienated man has been alienated since time immemorial just the difference is that the amount the quantum is somewhat varying let's say for example this first stage is zeroth stage that is the primitive communism i will write it as pc primitive communism secondly we entered into the next mode of production that is called as uh, the ancient slave third we enter into entered into feudalistic mode of production and now we are here somewhere here capitalistic mode of production or capitalism i hope you are okay with the shorts of the feudal right according to marx alienation in primitive communism was at its minimal something like this it increased to this point in ancient slave society then again it got intensified in feudal societies and now 
in the capitalist societies it has reached its peak this is alienation right it has reached its peak alienation in capitalism what happens in capitalism the society is organized on a peculiar class basis where the society is divided into two different classes haves and have nots bourgeois or proletariat where the workers work for the interests of the bourgeois class where the workers work for if it is a society in capitalism there are only few who rule the society those are called as the rulers or the ruling community and this is the ruled class the majority according to marx this class is called as bourgeois class or the haves right and this class is called as proletariat the bourgeois class or the capitalist class exploits the labor of the proletariat what is the interest of bourgeois here the interest of bourgeois is to earn profits earn profits why bourgeois class is involved in production process why they own the factories why they own the industrial processes why they produce by the way to earn profits they don't produce for the survival of society they don't produce for a uh, human existence they don't produce on humanitarian lines that the products production will reach to every class this is not their intention they produce for profits and as the social being of individual dominates the individual own being the majority gets involved into the working class as a working class and they work for the interests of the bourgeois because they require some amount of money in the form of wages for survival they get themselves involved into the production process out of compulsion they have no other choice if they don't get involved into production process they won't earn money wages and everything runs on money every basic commodity which needs to be purchased is on the part of money right and that's how proletariat class involves themselves into production process out of compulsion most of them won't have you can say the interest to produce a car a shoe a pen a technology you can yourselves uh, try to understand the feelings of your friends who are working in many industries uh, many of them will be in the it few of them will be in civil engineering firm um, a few of them will be in mechanical engineering firm and all uh, but the common cry of all those guys irrespective of their working fields will be dissatisfaction they are unsatisfied and if you ask them why you are working then if you are not feeling passionate about it about your work why you are working the same and the common our the most average answer will be compulsion right out of compulsion if they want to survive live in the society by the way if they want to get married at least they need a job right and that's how they need a job for their this social being and that's how the they they work out of compulsion they don't have any emotional bond psychological bond attachment to their work they wait they keep waiting for the weekends they keep waiting for evening 5 or 6 or the off time throughout the day they keep waiting for government holidays 
they keep waiting for increments in the wages and salaries but they won't expect workload they don't wait for new challenges in the work they don't wait for new ideas in the work they don't innovate what is it symbolizing it is symbolizing that they are not emotionally attached with involved into the work they are working for the sake of the capitalists the bourgeois class and by the way now simple mathematical equation what is the interest of bourgeois it is earning profits and then tell me what why the proletariat are working actually to get bourgeois and profits and you know that since history or time immemorial production process has been centrality of the mankind man has uh, this man, the mass defines it as in order to survive man must produce this is the quote of marx in order to survive man must produce but what is happening in capitalism in order to get or in order to earn profits for the sake of bourgeois the proletariat must work isn't it a contradiction isn't it a contradiction right the man used to produce when he was living in hunting gathering society the man used to produce out of his creative being for survival now in capitalism the man or the labor class or the proletariat class is in the production process because few few bourgeois class want to earn huge profits few in the bourgeois class want to earn huge profits and now the both of these classes bourgeois and proletariat they don't have a direct intention of survival a direct intention for social well being or anything why are working they are working out of compulsion and why they are involved in production process because of earning profits not survival per se according to marx this situation is called as alienation this is nothing but a contradiction a feeling of detachment a feeling of entrenchment right a feeling of separation from the work a feeling of not getting involved into the work completely a feeling of not getting emotionally attached with the work completely a feeling of not being creative itself as the man is essentially a creative being as a man essentially is a production unit a production being a producing being he is losing the creativity somewhere here he comes to factory he fits the same nut bolts every day right he paints the cars with the same color every day for years on years he he fits the tires to that same car the same tires hours after hours weeks after weeks months after months and years after years the process of production becomes so monotonous so boring so automatic so you can say monolithic that the, the workers don't find any interest any creativity in that work and that happened especially after mr ford in his idea of fordism introduced the assembly line concept have you watched the movie called as modern times by charlie chaplin please do watch it of course as it is a, a humor uh, or a humoristic uh, movie but it truly defines the idea of alienation in that movie alienation uh you can say uniform work on daily basis same work no creativity no challenge no idea no innovation 
no time for the family no time for your colleagues no time for your own selves and that is how slowly and slowly slowly and slowly you are getting detached from the entire social things entirety and including yourself the alienation or a detachment from the production process it is to that level the same product which the labor is producing he has to buy it from the market with the help of money now think in the primitive societies what man used to produce he used to consume it what man used to produce he used to use it without let's say uh, counting a single penny without paying a single penny to anybody now in capitalism the contradiction is such a level that the contradiction is in that level that the the same production laborer the same laborer who produced a shoe in one particular factory if he wants to purchase that the if he want to get that produce the shoe he has to go to the market he has to go he has to pay to the shopkeeper and then only he will get that shoe isn't it a huge contradiction the first contradiction in capitalism was man is a creative being man produces for survival right but in capitalism the labor class or the proletariat produces for the profits of the produces because the bourgeois must get profits and second contradiction is that the very product the labor class was producing or the labor class has produced it has to be purchased from the market by paying some amount of money for it which is called as fetishism of commodities in fetishism of commodities the commodity or the non living thing gets to get more importance than the living things are you getting me the commodity is more important now than the individuals the commodity the non living thing is more important than the living thing right in that commodity of fetishism this concept is given by marx in his uh, it is a separate chapter by the way in his famous work das kapital in fetishism of commodities he explains how the individuals the living things are getting deteriorated into their importance and getting replaced by the commodities now what is important in the market the produce what is important what is valuable what is valued in the market it is the produce it is the final product which is non living and what is not valued in the produce or in the in the market or which is or what is undervalued in the market which is or what is getting exploited in the market it is the labor class the living thing marx called it as the commodity of fetishism where the commodities will start getting importance more than the living things and that's how slowly and slowly the individual start losing control over everything in their life starting with the produce as the individual or the labor class or the proletariat class who used to produce that same good now he he if he wants to purchase or get that or use that produce he needs to pay for it it is not free for even that original producer of that produce marx spread this idea this feeling of detachment divorcing or the separation from the produce are you getting me by the way what i am trying to say if an individual 
produces certain thing in a factor system. Let's say for example an individual or a labor a labor produces a car a more affordable car for example let's say for example any simple car basic car of Tata he produces that car in the factory but does he have ownership on that car and if at all he wants to use that car for his family purpose will the company allow for it yes of course the company will allow only after he pays three to four five lakh for it but who was the original producer of that company or of, of that produce or that car it was the laborer but who owned the final produce the bourgeois the ruling class the capitalists the real producers of the commodities the real producers of the goods are not the real owners of the goods the real producers of the goods are not the real owners of the goods but the real owners of that goods or commodities are certain few who are sitting somewhere else managing the factories and working for the profit motive or even not visited the assembly line in last 5-6 months but they own complete assembly lines all the cars all the profits and everything but those people who work there on day to day basis for long hours for weeks and months and years with very low wages with sweat on their body they start losing or they, do, they, they don't get any share of profit or at least a, a single produce that is a detachment from the production the, the produce Marx termed this idea as alienation alienation according to Marx is nothing but a separation a separation or detachment or divorce from the production process where the non-living thing will replace the living things in its importance where the non-living things non-living things will have more importance than the living things and this is the situation where the individuals start feeling powerless they start feeling powerless because they have no control over the very production very produce over the market or any other thing in the market they feel started they feel they start feeling powerless they start feeling meaningless they start feeling purposeless they start feeling detached correct the spelling by the way <coughs> right this feeling is nothing but a psychological condition and social condition that is a socio psychological condition this feeling is a socio psychological condition where the individual laborer or who is getting exploited will start feeling like this that is powerless meaningless purposeless detached alienated from the produce and this feeling of alienation, the feeling of detachment, the feeling of powerlessness and meaninglessness it works at different levels according to Karl Marx. Different levels. According to Marx, 
the alienation is at four different levels. First of all, the workers will start feeling alienated. The workers will start feeling alienated. Alienated, by the way, T E D. Alienated, firstly, from the produce. Alienated from the produce. By the way, till this time, now you are clear with what the feeling of alienation is. Now Marx adds to his concept. He talks about the levels, the different levels at which the alienation is being felt. It is felt at four different levels. It is felt first of all from the produce. What the worker or the labor class, laborer are producing, they lose control over their own produce. Think on this. Who is producing the actual shoe or the car? It is the labor class. It is the working class. It is the proletariat. But actually who owns that produce? Who owns that profit? Who owns over that market? It is the bourgeois class. It is the haves class, right? And that's how they start losing the control over their own produce. If the labor class wants to purchase that very produce, he used to produce in the factories. He now has to count money for it. He won't get it for free, right? And that's how the labor class will start separated from their own production, own produce, the, wo the own good he used to produce in the factories. And that idea is the first concept given by Karl Marx as the alienation from the very produce. At the second level, the alienation is felt at the production process. That is at the production process. In the second chapter of Das Kapital, the commodities of fetishism, Marx talked about this idea. Marx talked about how the labor class start feeling detached, alienated from the whole production process, a feeling of purposelessness. Why he is working in that factory, he doesn't know about it. He just knows we get wages for it, we get paid for it. But why, what is the purpose of working in those factories is not clear, right? That is the detachment from the production process. That is the, uh, the, the mechanical part, robotic part, automatically part, right? And that's how the labor class will start feeling separated from, detached from the whole intention of the production process, the whole purpose of the production process. Are you getting me? The idea is that the production process becomes so mechanical, the production process becomes so dehumanizing, the production process becomes so, you can say, boring in nature that the workers will start losing the very purpose. They will start questioning for the very purpose of why we are working here. That is called as their emotional psychological detachment from the production process. Right? Are you getting me? The worker, the those who are getting exploited will start feeling alienation like situation at different four levels. Out of that four levels, the first level is from the produce. That is the product, the final product which was supposed to be owned by the laborers, but it is now owned by the proletariat or the bourgeois class. Secondly, at the production level, because they start questioning the whole process or they, they feel alienated from the whole process. What is this going on? Why is this going on and why we are here? This question start to come in their minds. What is the actual purpose, the final purpose for what we are working here? All these are the questions. Those are asked by the workers to themselves. And they don't get answers for that. That is a detachment from the production process. Thirdly, the detachment, separation, divorce from the society. Third is from society. Detachment from alienation from the society at social level. The worker the labor class 
will start feeling separated from the complete society will start feeling detached from the whole society he won't have time for his family's family he won't have time for his friends he won't have time for his colleagues he will be busy and busy working and working year on year weeks on weeks months and months for no purpose for no clarity why he is working is he satisfied is he happy or not right nobody cares about him nobody cares about other workers are they happy are they feeling purposeful satisfied in the production process the managers won't ask the laborers the owners won't ask the laborers the colleagues won't ask the other colleagues the friends won't ask their own friends and the families won't care about them also because if they got don't get wages they won't survive and that's how this is a detachment from the complete society it is the detachment from the complete social thing and that's how from each social group starting with the family to the colleagues they will start getting separated they will start feeling detached they will start getting alienated and fourthly when the alienation will start controlling his mind in its complete sense starting with alienation from produce alienation from the production process alienation from complete society now in the last phase of alienation he will start losing control on his own self he will start feeling detached from his own individual being he will start questioning his own existence he will start questioning his own life his own purpose why because man by nature is a creative thing a creative being and if he is not creating something and if he is not involved in a creation process he won't be satisfied he won't be happy and that's exactly what is happening in capitalism when the alienation in capitalism will reach it at at, at its peak that is the fourth stage the fourth stage is nothing but from self alienated from self alienated from self the idea that the labor class the individual proletariat or the the proletariat class will start losing control over themselves also they will start feeling frustrated depressed of losing purpose detached isolated in to, to that extent that they will start the questioning their own existence this idea is nothing but alienation from their own selves according to marx the alienation from the self is the most dangerous thing when the labor class or the proletariat class will start feeling alienated from their selves this is the maturity of the alienation this is the peak of alienation okay and i will give you here only because the idea that alienation at the fourth stage alienation from the self is going to trigger revolution is going to trigger class conflict which is our syllabus point that is the next syllabus point the fourth point after alienation and we are going to require this conceptual understanding for the next upcoming syllabus topic that is called as the class struggle so that's how we will hold our curiosity to itself how it gets converted into or the alienation gets converted into class struggle and revolution that is again one of the interesting parts we are going to discuss in marks but not now but in the next session 
until now let's recall what we are we have talked about we talked about the individual nature the nature of any individual which is creative a naturalistic creative right why we create and why we produce for our own survival but when the very purpose of production that is survival the very purpose of production gets manipulated and overtaken by many other things like profits the man naturally will start questioning his own existence purpose intentions to work what we were supposed to work or what we were supposed to produce for it's our own survival but what is happening in capitalism they are producing for the profits of bourgeois the profits of capitalist class and the labor class is not happy even they are getting more and more exploited alienated separated so what we have learned in concept of alienation we learned that the idea the concept of alienation is nothing but a psychological social concept which gives the idea about the feeling of detachment the feeling of divorcing the feeling of separation from the very produce where the non living things will get more importance than the living things which is explained in the commodities of fetishism chapter sorry the fetishism of commodity chapter in das capital and the alienation is a feeling of isolation powerlessness meaninglessness purposelessness which is again manifested at four different levels that is alienation from the produce alienation from the production process alienation from the complete society and lastly that will percolate into the self alienation will start percolating into the self what marx called it as alienation from self right and that's how marx through this process or the, through, through this concept of alienation tries to give an idea or some insights about individual in capitalism what happens to an individual in the process of capitalism how the capitalist class exploits the individual labor and what happens to him in the production process what happens to him in the production process what is the condition of an individual labor individual proletariat in the production process in single word it can be defined as the condition of alienation right according to marx the whole system of capitalism is founded on the material conditions the economic conditions materialistic conditions right where the materially materialistic conditions have no place for individual happiness individual satisfaction the labor class satisfaction the the purpose of the life it has no place in the production process the materialism has to do with the profits quantity production amount of goods produced amounts of exports imports and of course most importantly the profits right and that's how the quest for profits on the hands of few that is bourgeois pushes the complete society pushes the complete uh, proletariat class into a, a, a deep ridge a deep ridge of alienation the urge for earning more profits the urge for more earning more profits the uh, we can say for more production for more materialism the whole proletariat class is thrown into deep reach of alienation according to marx right and according to marx 
that is going to trigger the class conflict and revolution when alienation will reach at its peak that is from self which we are going to discuss in the fourth topic of Karl Marx that is the class struggle okay now let's start with some other sides of this idea or some critic on the concept of alienation uh, to what extent Marx has been successful in explaining the condition of labor class through the concept of alienation in its complete, complete sense. Uh, was Marx completely right about explaining this condition as alienation or are there some inadequacies and limitations in the concept of alienation by Marx? We will discuss about it. Okay, let's start with critic. Let's start with the critic to the concept of alienation. There is one important and one interesting study on the labor class in London. That study is called as the affluent workers study. There are uh, two significant sociological thinkers <coughs> whose names are Goldthorpe and Lockwood. And this study, uh, the affluent labor class or affluent worker study, we are going to use it in many chapters throughout the paper 1 and paper 2. But let's start with its introduction first. We'll discuss about what that study is <coughs> or what Goldthorpe and Lockwood Goldthorpe and Lockwood observed in their study called as the affluent worker study. <clears throat> they observed that the workers in that area, probably the London, they observed that the workers don't care about the purpose of life and the idea of production and everything. They don't care about the uh, uh, whether the produce is being uh, owned by the labor class or the bourgeois class or whether what is the exact purpose of my life, uh, uh, what is my passion and everything. They don't care about these ideas. What they are cared of are but only the wage. The wage, the money they will get out of that work, that will serve as only means for their ends. Their wages, their salaries are not end in themselves. They will act as means with which they will, you can say, maintain their lifestyle outside the workplace. They will maintain their lifestyle in the families. They will purchase uh, good TVs, they will subscribe for Netflix, <laughs> of course not God heavy also, but they will of course maintain the lifestyle that they require. They will build friendships, they will build uh, uh, great bonds with family, they will go for let's say for tourism with that money, they will go to bars and pubs with that money uh, from which they earned from the factories. They will, they will purchase cars good accessories like watches, goggles and everything with the same money for which they worked and that's how they will maintain their lifestyle in terms of affluence and they will, they won't care about the exploitation or the produce and the production and that's how alienation won't be felt by the laborers. They don't feel alienated. They become very happy when they receive the message of salary on monthly basis. The amount is so huge and the amount of the salary is so large that all the pain of the work is extinguished, is got, got get washed in couple of moments. That study 
of by Goldthorpe and Lockwood proved that alienation are not or alienation is not felt by many of the laborers. Alienation is not felt by many of the laborers because the work and the salary act as just means to their ends. What is their end or the end purpose of the life? They have their own purpose. They have their own creativity ideas. They have their own social bonds, family bonds. So how they can be rendered from society? How they are feeling purposeless? No, they have the purpose outside the workplace. The main life, the defining life, the actual life they uh, live is outside the workplace and the workplace is not the complete life. So whatever happens in the workplace is not going to have a defining hand on their life because work is just a part of their life just a part of their life and the other areas of life are so well maintained by these affluent labors that the feeling of alienation is just a just an imaginary concept secondly according to karl popper or let's discuss in generalistic terms many times creativity many times creativity uh, artistic works come out of the feeling of alienation many times creativity is channeled through the 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 feeling of alienation many of the great artists many of the great you can say musicians mm many who have created a lot who are creative in nature they create their best in the feeling of alienation with the feeling of alienation so how can you say the feeling of alienation is detrimental at the same time it is not necessary that when somebody feels alienated he will certainly go for a revolution Revolution just an idea, just a, just an option. According to many sociologists, instead of going for a revolution, taking arms in their hands, overthrowing the capitalists, organizing the labor movements, they have many other options than doing the revolution or going for revolution. And that's how, if at all, alienation is felt by the labor class, felt by the labor class, they won't actually go for revolution or class struggle. They will, you can say, uh, explore the other options like creativity, singing, music, dance, hobby. What R.K. Martin called it as in his idea of deviance. Sometimes they go for rebellion. Means if uh, a worker is feeling alienated, uh, detached from the production process, he might go for, uh, let's say for example, a crime, a robbery. Well, uh, uh, have you heard about Luddite re rebellion, Luddite revolution in the world history concept? Luddites, right? Who, are, who were the Luddites? The Luddites were those who were frustrated out of those industrial revolution. Those were the same workers who used to work in those factories year on year, months on months. They got so much frustrated with the machine and all. They started breaking the machine itself or the machines in the England, in the factories of the England. But they, they didn't organize for labor movement or a, a revolution as Marx, Marx, you can say projected. So, according to many sociologists, if at all the workers are feeling alienation, it won't result into class struggle or revolution. They will explore for other options just like deviance or rebellion. What Karl Popper called as creativity.
राईट वन इम्पॉर्टंट सोशोलॉजिस्ट अनदर सोशोलॉजिस्ट हिज नेम इज मॅक्स वेबर it is not the capitalism which is responsible for alienation like situation but it is the iron cage of rationality which is responsible for alienation we'll talk about it by the way iron cage iron cage of rationality by the way if you have watched all those earlier videos regarding concepts and all Iron cage of rationality is a technical concept given by Max Weber in which he defines that or he explains the concept as the peak of bureaucracy the peak of authority the peak of mechanical organization of society to that level on the on the on the foundation of rationality of course that we will cage ourselves into a cage of rationality in procedures laws rules timelines deadlines and everything and we will cage ourselves into a box a cage a jail of rationality and because of that cage of rationality a jail of rationality the feeling like alienation will start accumulating the feeling like anomie will start accumulating and it is not the capitalism it is not the profit motive it is not the exploitation on the part of the capitalist but it is the iron cage of rationality which is responsible for alienation like situation okay on these lines these are the major critic the major you can say ideas on the grounds of which marx has been criticized marx has been questioned for the concept of alienation to sum up alienation is nothing but a social psychological situation in which the individual starts losing control on or over almost everything including his own self and according to marx this condition is very much required for the next phase in the progress of society that is the class struggle but the idea of alienation has been criticized on various grounds just like uh, as max weber defined it as not capitalism but the iron cage of rationality which is responsible for the alienation like situation goldthorpe and lockwood had observed that the affluent laborers in london they don't care about alienation they don't care about the production their purpose of life and everything what they care about is the life that is after the production process outside the factories they maintain their lifestyles out of the same wages they get in the factories and thirdly it is the or alienation is actually a creative force alienation is not a detaching force alienation is a creative force in itself artists writers musicians many other artists they become so great out of the alienation feeling the feeling of alienation and that's how we cannot call alienation as non creative boring or you can say mechanical actually according to karl popper alienation is a creative force according to rk merton alienation won't result into a rebellion sorry a revolution or a class conflict directly or actually it will result into some other options let's say for example rebellion devils crime suicide the workers first of all will explore for the other options than directly going for class struggle revolution and the situations like this and that's how marx has been questioned uh, with his idea of alienation for its entirety as the alienation process won't what it claims as explaining the situation of uh, labor class but the claim of the concept of alienation is incomplete is inadequate but 
we can't reject the idea of alienation completely we can't reject it because what we had observed in india few years back in maruti suzuki plant in gurgaon was the condition of alienation itself they were feeling detached from their work right they were feeling a feeling of alienation separation from their purpose and everything that's how they rebelled against the management in maruti suzuki uh, plant and many such other events like arab spring wall street journal of wall street occupy wall street and all which signifies the the you can say uh, a volcano a lava like situation in the minds and the hearts of the labor class which is about to explode about to explode in the form of revolution a rebellion in class conflict at any time which has the background of alienation and that's how in many cases and most of the cases alienation stands successfully in explaining the real socio psychological condition of the labor class when they are at the working place okay and on that note i would like to conclude this session and we will naturally enter into the next topic will continue alienation and slowly move towards no no actually the alienation is over by the way but we will take help of one concept that is alienation single concept and then we will directly and en- transfer into ourselves into a next topic that is called as the class struggle okay till then i thank you very much we'll meet soon with the next topic the fourth session that is the going to be the last session second last session by the way on the karl marx and in the the after class class struggle we are going to have a separate session on critic on karl marx as whole to what extent the marx's ideas were relevant to explain the social structures okay thank you very much nandip academy india's top coaching institution for civil services preparation Join us online to get most enriching experience from best faculty with excellent notes and specially designed courses. To join the batch, download Nandi Pais Academy app from Google Play Store. For more information, contact 9511-280465.